Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Manny Diaz Show. Joe Zagak, University of Miami head coach, Manny Diaz. Don Bailey Jr., Hurricanes coming off a win against Virginia this past Friday, coming up on Saturday at 12 o'clock at Hard Rock Stadium. It'll be Miami and Georgia Tech, and we'd love to see you out there because the crowd played a very important role the other night against Virginia coach, which we'll talk about, but heck of a win for your squad against the Cavaliers. It really was. Um... It was, a, it was a total team effort. You know, everybody had a role. We knew it was going to be hard. Uh, Virginia is a tough nut to crack. Um, but ultimately, we started fast and we finished strong. You know, and being best at the critical moments really got us the win. Coach, you go back into that ball game, and there was one important question that came out of it. Who is Turner Davidson? <laughs> and it really, at the end of the day, it meant quite a bit, didn't it? In these ACC games where everything matters, and we, we have certainly seen it, um, you know, it was a game where points were hard to come by. And he had a chance to, to score five, and he scored five, and we needed all five of them. So it was, a, um, it was unusual. It was a, um, it was a pregame warm-up decision. Uh, we felt like Turner was just the, the, the better guy, more consistent in warm-ups. And Jonathan Packey and Danny Coulter, who major in our special teams, uh, made the suggestion. We just said we felt good about it and went with it. And, and to Turner's credit, he was ready and made the kicks. Uh, you talk a lot about it being a relentless effort. And it really was probably a, an epiphany moment maybe for the entire squad, but uh, also a guy that was relentless was, was Greg Rousseau. Greg is relentless is a good word to describe Greg. He, uh, he's got a motor that doesn't stop, and of course he's got such great length, uh, and his, his steps are not like normal people's steps. I mean, he covers a lot of <laughs> ground when, when, when he decides to go uh, somewhere, and it was great to see him have the game he had, you know, on that stage, national TV. Uh, we have been... We've been waiting on it for a couple of years. We've known he's had great things to come, and, and there's still a lot more to come from Greg Rousseau. But, Coach, let's stick on that for a moment because everybody wants to know, well, why did it take so long? Well, first of all, let's remind them that he, the young man was injured last year, and I remember what he looked like in training camp. It's nothing what he looked like against uh, Virginia last, no, or for last Friday night. That's correct. Um, Greg had a good spring. Greg did not have a great training camp. Uh, mm -hmm. And obviously, we have a very highly competitive defensive end uh, rotation right now, and but as the season went on, and you know, defensive end is just so different than what it was 20 years ago. You don't just get to rush around the edge and, and go sack the quarterback. I mean, there's so many things now with the zone read game um, that you got your eyes in the right spot in terms of how you take on blocks. You really fit into the defense more like an outside linebacker on first down and second down. Now, third down is where the fun starts. But if you don't do the job on first and second down, you don't get to earn the right to rush the passer. You know, I think a guy that went uh, maybe under the radar a little bit, not with you, uh, most, uh, but with the fans and us, I think it was Finley. Romeo Finley had a heck of a game the other night, led the team in tackles. Yeah, Romeo was very active. Um, you know, it was a game where, you know, we, he's so versatile, we can use him in different ways. Some days he behaves more like a defensive back, a lot of man coverage. This was a game where he had to come in and really be our extra hat in the box for run game. Um, and, you know, I mean, the very first play of the game, they want to run up the middle, and Romeo's right there to get the guy on the ground. So, um, that's the great thing about Romeo. He's, he's got a, a lot of skills that he can offer to the team. Coach Trajan Bandy got recognized by the conference, but also by every Hurricane fan in the stands. Had a heck that's, of a day. That's Trajan, you know, the big fumble recovery at a huge moment. And then, and then that sack uh, in the one-minute drill at the end, which was, you know, sacks and one-minute drills are drive killers. And, and it, you know, they were out of timeouts. It's the one thing you can't have as an offense. And um, to be able to come up with that play at that moment is what big-time players do. I know this, Bryce Perkins has been there for two years. Uh, I'm going to go to his graduation. Yes. <laughs> You'll be joined by the entire Miami defense. Nobody, nobody, the whole conference. Nobody <laughs> wants to see that guy again, but I'll say this, I'm pretty sure he doesn't want to see us again yeah. anymore. I mean, I mean, it was a great battle between, he's a great competitor, we have a bunch of great competitors. We've held him to under 20 points both years, but, but he is, uh, that guy's hard to contend with. Yeah. Coach, let's look at the other side of the football for Virginia. Their defense, highly ranked, it came in causing or started the season causing everybody a lot of trouble, and Miami was successful against them, about as successful as you can get in a lot of respects. Yeah, there were, um, you know, obviously we started the game, game with a great drive. Sure. Um, man, we had some shots in mm -hmm. the first half that we just missed that really could have changed the, complexity, the complexion of the game. You know, I mean, three or four times we're behind their defense and just got to, you know, we're just inches away. And that's, that's all part of it. We'll continue to take those, but we got, we got to hit those. Um, Cause all of a sudden you hit a couple of those. I mean, it might've been 14, nothing. We have one of the second series on the first play. It could be 14, nothing. And it's a different deal in that stadium. Now um, 
we 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 made some errors, you know. We you know just some some self inflicted wounds offensively. I didn't think our attention to detail was uh, was great throughout the, the course of the game, um, but when it mattered uh, in the fourth quarter, and we talked about it at the hotel on on game day, it being playing Virginia is about persistence. Even if you watch Notre Dame has got a great offense, Notre Dame did not go up and down the field on Virginia. Mm-hmm. That game got out of hand because of defensive turnovers and, and Notre Dame scooping scoring fumbles. But in the fourth quarter, Notre Dame was able to get the running game going against Virginia, and we were able to get some easy throws to the outside, start to pop some runs, and ultimately score ten, which was uh, decisive in our victory. I don't know if I'm right or wrong, but they kind of Virginia. They kind of remind me of Wisconsin, maybe a poor man's Wisconsin. I don't know, but uh, big and strong, uh, playing the same way all the time, same guys, older team. Uh, don't make a lot of mistakes. Yeah, there's some similarities there, and, and uh, they're both an odd front and a lot of pressure, a lot of movement. Um, but we mentioned, you know, that we want to, you know, they, they want to tough guy you, you know, and you got out tough the tough guys. And, and again, I, I thought for, you know, the way that our young guys up front battled and to see some of those runs pop out of there on that last drive was really rewarding um, because they stuck with it, you know. And, 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 and the great thing, again, this has been a, a year-long theme, even when we are, you know, sort of struggling for, for in the middle part of the game on offense, no panic, no one pointing fingers, no sad faces. Just hey, let's get it again and let's do it. And and that's the mentality that allows you to stay, keep your mind clear to make those two drives at the end of the game, the two scoring drives in the fourth quarter. Coach, let's talk about tough guy for a minute because I've seen Nikosi Perry the last two games that he's played in, obviously Virginia Tech, Virginia. He's a tough guy now. He can take a hit, and he gets up, and he's taking some shots. And that's an impressive part of a quarterback's game. I agree. And, um, you know, Nikosi's made an improvement in every, in every way you can improve as a quarterback. We've all seen that. Some of that would just come from age. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the way he goes through his progressions, but then also having the, the instinct on when to, you know, sometimes you got to bail out of there and to go. And, and obviously his foot speed gives us an element uh, on the first fourth down and seven on the first, for, uh, first drive of the game to be able to, to recognize it's not there and to go and get those the yards needed to ultimately lead to a touchdown drive was huge. Um, and, uh, and again, his resiliency, and, you know, everyone watches the quarterback. So for him to not panic, for him to, to not get down when things aren't, you know, when we miss a couple of those shots, you know, the, the offense will always take on the personality of its quarterback. Probably only fitting for him to get the game-winning touchdown. Uh, you know, they had a tough night a year ago against Virginia. You mentioned the opening drive. So he started up very well there. I don't know if you're supposed to throw it to somebody on that play, but he ran it in for the touchdown, which uh, is kind of comes full circle against Virginia. Well, in the red zone, it was, it was a pass, yeah. and, and there were a couple options for him to get to. And um, But the problem in the red zone, and, and trust me, the game obviously came down to red zone execution, is if you cover everyone, there's normally no one left to cover the quarterback. And that's, in essence, what happened. You know what I mean? So if you're going to play max coverage, you usually get max blitz or max coverage down there. And if you get max coverage, if the defense line can't, you know, you know, keep the QB locked in. There's no one left for him, and that's ultimately what happened. Coach, I'll never miss a miss a chance to bring up Jimmy Murphy. What a heck of a job on punt coverage, huh? Yeah, it is. Um, he's, he's just, you know, that's why I say he's not a Rudy story. I mean, the guy, the guy no, is a player. The, the guy can play, and, and his effort is contagious. Um, you know, but there's other guys. I mean, Al Blade's effort on that was unbelievable. Of course, Louis, you know, getting the ball out of there and what, how that's. In a game, and their punter, who had not been great, punted the ball great. It was, you know, again, when you get in these KG, you know, I always call them like these NFL-type battles, you know, sometimes the race of 20 is going to win, where field position, which what we struggled with so much a year ago, and now seeing that, you know, start to, you know, work in our favor at times, is, you know, with our punt game has been really encouraging. Uh, you mentioned the red zone, and the red zone uh, offensively was the best of the year the other night. Uh, you scored touchdowns in the red zone for the last five trips, and the red zone defense was the best of the year as well, kept them out of the end zone. Both teams got the ball inside of 23 times. Yeah. Virginia got nine points and we got 17. And that's simply it. You know, yeah. we, we have a goal on offense. We want to score 80% of all available points on offer. You know, so if you get down there three times, that's 21 points in theory on offer. And to get 17 out of 21 is like 81%. So we had met our goal. And, you know, of course, for UVA to get nine out of 21 available is less than half, you know. So that was it. And, and red zone is a mentality. Um, it's hard to score down there. There's just less grass. There's just less room. You know, offense is all about creating space and attacking space. Well, when the closer the ball gets to the goal line, there is less space. However, for the defense, the margin for error is less as well. So um, the way our guys bowed their necks in the red zone and kept them out of the end zone was, uh, you know, as a coach, was very encouraging to see. 
Coach, encouraging as well is the lack of penalties on the University yeah. of Miami in this ball game. Yeah, I thought our guys, um, you know, obviously we made a big point of emphasis of that in practice um, to to clean up some of the things, especially some of the self-inflicted wounds that we had been um, that were that were avoidable. And, and our guys have done, our coach has done a good job of getting that, you know, through. And that's something we got to take a lot of pride in every week. This week it's Georgia Tech, twelve o'clock game. Uh, but to make that win against Virginia meaningful and, and everything else moving forward, because you're still in this race. It's uh, Georgia Tech on Saturday, and the crowd the other night was really, really good. It rained like hell before, but they showed up, and it'd be great for uh, 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 to make Hard Rock again hard to play in this Saturday at 12 o'clock. It, it absolutely made an impact on the game. I mean, in that fourth quarter, um, you know, when our guys on defense have played a lot, you know, and, and, and chasing Perkins around will, will wear you out. <laughs> but when you when you get that boost from the fans, you know it just it just gives you that little extra that you may not have on your own, and and uh, and then no different for offense. Go down the field at the end, and when you're, you know, when in our stadium with our people and our support, they were invaluable Friday night. Coach, talk about the value of depth. You talk about taking a guy, t- chasing a guy like Bryce Perkins, and it's going to happen again and again this season. But the ability to roll that defensive line and how you want to build depth everywhere on this team. Yeah, we went nine deep on our D line, and had we not. Those drives are at the end. I don't know that we could have done what we did. Now, now look at Virginia. What happened to Virginia on those last two drives? Was that a lack of their depth? Maybe you know where maybe some of the depth that they don't have up front um, that wore them down, and suddenly we, we could move the ball on there at the end. And of course, they had the, the the terrible injury to their defensive back, you know, which may have accounted for that as well. So, you know, that's what it's all about. You know, we, we lose Amari Carter. I mean, you got to have a next man up mentality, and you know, Rob Knowles goes in there and and makes a great PBU down in the red zone, and so. Um, you never know where your numbers be called. Look at Nikosi Perry. Mm-hmm. You know, Nikosi is, is a great persistent story. It didn't happen when I wanted to. You keep working hard. You keep, you know, getting yourself and uh, is better and better and better and better. And bang, all of a sudden one day you're in there and it's your time. Miami and Georgia Tech Saturday at 12 o'clock. Good tickets still available for as low as $35. 1-800-GO-CANES or hurricanesports.com slash tickets. And we will continue with University of Miami head coach Manny Diaz right after this. Welcome to the Breakdown segment with head coach Manny Diaz. And coach, what do you have in store for us today? Well, we're going to look at, um, obviously we know it's a great effort about our defense. Um, a big part of that, I think, is uh, number one, the continued development of our defensive backs. And nowhere did that show up more than in the red zone, which obviously red zone was so key uh, to the game. So this play is right before halftime. This is actually, even to, me, to make a further import on this play, this is the play after the long catch and run on third and long by okay. Virginia. So this is probably... The worst play we had defensively, this is the next play. So, again, you have to let it go, next play mentality, mentally tough, and you got to defend your red zone. So, red zone coverage. Um, and, again, just to show you a couple of things that are going on here up top. So, the first thing Perkins is doing is he's looking to the wide side of the field, right? Al Blades, against their best player in terms of Joe Reed, does a great job staying on his inside hip right there like that. By the, t- by the time Reed, they're trying to run Reed on an angle route, he's trying to come back in. We have this receiver bracketed down here. You can see we're four over top two here in the boundaries. There's nothing open. Al's got the one-on-one. Does a great job. By this time, Perkins has come off. Now it's about Rush staying after this guy, being relentless, and then staying in coverage when he starts to scramble. There's Perkins to some of his magic and a lot of guys around him. So we we win first down, right? Right. We, We get him to throw it away. And again, a great job by our guys up front trying to be relentless because they got to keep him. We saw Nikosi run for a touchdown, right? Look at the difference, look at the pocket right here. So again, Chigoze, Jade, Patchen, uh, Trayvon Hill, giving him no escape route. That's Nikosi running for a touchdown on, on our touchdown at the end, right? So a great job by the pass rush, you know, and again, showing up, getting after this guy. This guy is so hard to sack. You know what I mean? It just, that's what makes him him. Coach, share, share with us about the late arrival of Shaq. You, you talk about the prong rush towards the quarterback, but so, him monitoring So Shaq it. has a running back man-to-man, so as the running back was blocking, and then at the end, the running back goes out, and Ryan Ragoni picks him up right here, so Shaq is free now to go be the second responder to the quarterback right there. The big thing we like him to do is get more, lower his target, uh, get through that near thigh with his right shoulder to have a chance, but again, that's, that's easier when you got the remote control in your hand <laughs> than, than being out there and doing it. So now it's 17 seconds left. The next play... All right, so again, they're going to try and attack our coverage. So we know we've got the one-on-one here. This is Gervin Hall, and guess who that is? There's number two, right? There's Reed. Boom. So if so, we have we have a, basically two guys surrounding Reed right here, like this. Okay. First look, 
He's going to throw the ball to the end zone. And this is a really, really outstanding coverage. Because what, watch what Gervin does here at the end. Violent on the back arm. Okay? It's really hard to catch the ball with your back. You've got to catch the ball with your back arm. You can't, it's hard to catch the ball with your front arm. So have that great moment of violence right there. No panic. No pass interference. You've seen so many times DBs panic here, have a hard time locating the ball. He does both. And with great violence, again, denies a pretty good player. But, Coach, the discipline that's involved, and you talk about the timing, too, because that very easily could have – that swipe could have come soon, and then the flag comes you out. You see it all the time. And that's why uh, red zone defense for defensive backs is all about poise. You know what I mean? You can't panic down there. And then also, if you got a great rush, so now let's, let's focus on the big guys again. I want to show you Trayvon Hill right here. He does something pretty dirty to, the, to their left tackle. Watch the fake spin. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> Boom. And is right into the thighs of, of the quarterback right there. Now let's set that up because that's one of it. The spin is one of his best moves. No, I know it. I <laughs> right? know it. And he says, no, nope, not this time. Yep. And Patchen's got a good bull rush going in right there because, again, what are we trying to do? We're trying to collapse the pocket around a mobile quarterback to turn him into a thrower in the pocket, then there's a great finish. And again, see, see, see it reads hands. To catch the ball, he's got to put those two hands together, right, from right. a common sense standpoint. So Gervin being violent through the back of his body right there does a great job. While airborne. While airborne, by the That's way. So right. now we, we, have, we earn the right to play third down. Okay, third down. All right, and so same thing right here. And this time they're going to go after Al Blades. Okay, so here's Al Blades to the wide side of the field. He does have help here on the inside. Quick one step and throw. And again, same thing. We knew through film study that Virginia was a back shoulder fade team. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you would ask Al right here, why doesn't Al on the out the receiver outside releases? Why not Al turn inside to locate the ball? If you do that, you'll never stop the back shoulder fade. So Al turns into the man. And again, right now, panicked? No. The receiver's hands have not gone up yet. Hands up. Violence through the hands. And so again, that idea that right now that he's he's making the break. He's on the hip. He's mm -hmm. not panicked. He's not worried about grabbing the guy. Wait, when do the hands go up? Hands up, violence. Explain to everyone what is Al looking at. Is it hands to hands? He's is, looking at his hip. Or, he's, okay. look, he's looking at his hip. His eyes are down because the hips yep. tell you everything that's going to go. All right, and right there when the guy pulls away from him right now, what we tell Al right now, if Al turned and looked for the ball, he would not come out of the break. You have to run the route. So by turning and watch, getting into the man right there, see how he makes that? You can only do that by not locating the ball. That's why you can't locate the ball on the back shoulder fade. And you got to play through the hands, defend the front of the goal line. See how the ball is thrown right to the front of the goal line? Yes. The tendency right now in DBs when they're out here, yeah, they're worried about getting beat deep. You're not worried about getting beat deep when the ball is on the, on the eight-yard line. You want to get beat deep because the first blade of grass in the end zone is worth six, the same as the last blade of the, of the end zone. Bang, great job right there. And again, the, the, the rush here. This is where the quarterback just picks it up and throws it. You don't have a chance, but that's where getting hit the play before encourages them to get rid of the ball. Coach, if we can go back, I want to share with everybody the game within the game because right. you talk about communication, being a defensive – actually, in all of football. You walk, watch Shaq Quarterman. They're carrying on conversations right now while all of this is going on. Right. You see Amari's hand signaling. You know, right. Mike, Mike Pickney gives the, 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 the thumbs up. You know what I mean? Gil, Gilbert Frierson, you know, like – and that's it because everybody's got to be on point because defense is all about communication. Mm -hmm. We have to make sure we all understand, you know, if that guy does that, it's going to change the way that Pickney's going to play that. I mean, all oh, this is what we do, you know, all week in practice in terms of how we match up on all these routes. You can see it right here. You know, for example, the back flares, Pickney goes out, Shaq looks for the first thing coming back in right there. Amari's on top of 44, and that's how the whole thing happens. Now I'm going to show a critical situation in the game. I've talked about we've seen a great play Gervin Hall's made. We saw Al Blades make a great play. And now Trajan Bandy, who is ACC Player of the Week, but in, in a little bit out of role for a defensive back. This is a great call here by, by Blake Baker and our defensive staff. Great design of the pressure. We're 43 seconds left. And the key is that Virginia, it's hard to tell, but Virginia has no timeouts. Okay? Um, and that matters. And that was actually a great job by our offense on the last draft to make Virginia mm -hmm. use their timeouts. Um, so not only did they have to get eight, you know, through a touchdown and two-point conversion, they had to do it with no timeouts and, and drive the field. So this is a first down and, and five. We had a silly offsides penalty. Okay, now what kills one-minute drives? Sacks, Sacks, right? Especially right. when you don't have timeouts, okay? So this is going to be a blitz, okay? So here's Trajan Bandy. He's going to end up right over here on top of the quarterback's body, okay, which would be awesome. But that's where he's right now acting like he's covering the slot, which is what he normally does, okay? Shaquille Quarterman and Gervin Hall, all these guys are coming on a pressure right now, okay? So, again, the quarterback points us out. Trajan wants to know, are we changing the play? We said, no, Trajan, go. 
and boom, off he goes, okay? Now, let's, before we talk about the pressure, I'm going to talk about the coverage. They are trying to run a hitch and go right. on DJ Ivy to score a touchdown. DJ Ivy does a great job bailing off. By the time the guy runs hitch and go, and if you look right now, the quarterback right now is taking his hand off the ball, which DJ sees. Perhaps to throw the ball to the flat threat. He doesn't like it, and by that time, the pressure shows up. And you see we've got great coverage here to the field on top of all their wideouts down here in the field, okay? Now, let's watch the fun part, the blitz. So, again, everybody saw Greg Rousseau have a great game. Well, Greg is right here lined up as our nose guard right now because he's a real bad matchup for those guys on the inside. So Greg's going to work this direction. Shaq and Trayvon Hill are going to wrap behind Greg, almost like a little pick and roll. Mm -hmm. All right, and then here comes, oops, here comes Gervin and Trajan off the edge. So watch all the, the confusion this causes the offensive line and the running back. Okay, so watch their center. The center wants to follow Rousseau. Rousseau leaves. All of a sudden he sees, oh, wait, there's something coming back. Maybe I should have blocked that. He goes back and is looking at Trayvon Hill. And does not see Trajan Bandy come in right there, sort of sneaking in through the back door. You know what I mean? Trajan, Trajan made sure he was going to get a full shot on the quarterback Well, there's no doubt. Well. And part of the advantage of this, and this is, this is our dime package, is that guy is so hard to sack. Mm -hmm. But when you introduce speed guys, a guy like Trajan, a guy like Gervin Hall, better type athletes, um, that really helps. This is, a, again, a big time rush by Trayvon Hill. It tries to avoid keeps the cup feet. block, keeps his feet. You know what I mean? And the only thing we said right here is think ball. See how that ball is in a vulnerable position uh, right there? If that ball is always available, don't just sack him. See if we can't get the ball. We could have we could have ended the game right here. But, again, a guy like Trayden, you've seen his whole career. He had a big sack last week against the Hokies. Um, a guy that can make coverage, plays in coverage, and then we can also uh, turn him into a great blitzer. And, and, when, and it's fun to see defensive backs, you know, getting up off the quarterback like this. Pretty nice celebration. Always, big time. And now, look, and what's the issue? They're out of timeouts. They got to rush back and they got to they got to you know hurry up the next play. Thank you for joining us on the breakdown session with head coach Manny Diaz.